This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Two weeks before every Grand Sumo tournament, this piece of paper gets printed, picked up, and distributed in Japan. It's called the Banzuke, and it contains all the names of every sumo wrestler in professional Grand Sumo wrestling. But this isn't just a cool poster you put on your wall. The more you look, the more this piece of paper becomes a piece of art. The Bonzuke displays a unique ranking system considered to be one of the most difficult ranking systems in sports. And unlike other sports where they can get a clean slate after every major championship event, sumo wrestlers' performances in a grand sumo tournament carry over to the next one that can affect the whole dynamic of their fights and thus the whole of their career. Every professional sumo wrestler receives a rank for every Grand Sumo tournament from when they make their professional debut until retirement. That's why it's crazy that unless you can reach the rank of Yukizuna, the highest rank in sumo, a wrestler can climb all the way up to the top division and even become title holders, but still have a chance to fall all the way down to the bottom division and retire with a low rank despite the success at the peak of his career. And even how the Banzuke is written shows the heavily meritocratic nature of sumo's ranking system. A special calligraphy style called sumo moji uses these bold strokes to reflect the physical strength and power of the sumo wrestler. The bolder and the bigger name is in the Banzuke, the stronger the wrestler is and thus higher ranked. Sumo wrestlers are known for their weight, but surprisingly, the sport doesn't have weight divisions. Boxing and MMA, for example, classify athletes according to their weight to make the fight fair and safe. But sumo's six divisions are solely based on merit, and matches are made based on their ranks. The divisions are Jonokuchi, Jonidan, Sandanme, Makushita, Juryo, and Makuchi. Within these divisions, every wrestler gets a ranking assigned. But this middle section here gives a slight hierarchy even in these assigned ranks. This section divides the Banzuke into East and West, with the East side becoming slightly higher ranked than its West counterpart. So a fresh recruit starts at the lowest division. This is the Jonokuchi division that usually has around 40 to 90 wrestlers at a time. You'll mostly find teenagers here, some as young as 15, but you can also find the older wrestlers who have fallen to the bottom ranks due to prolonged injuries. But once a wrestler gets a good record here, he gets into the fifth division, the largest pool of wrestlers competing for promotions called the Johnny Dan division, with no limitations on how many wrestlers can be in Johnny Dan, this division in sumo wrestling has around 200 to 250 wrestlers at a time. And then rising to Sandanme, the fourth division of sumo, means the wrestler's career is at a break point. This division is capped at only 200 wrestlers, 100 for the East and 100 for the West. The Makushita division is the last division a sumo wrestler must overcome to finally become a full-fledged professional sumo wrestler as these divisions above it are where wrestlers receive a comfortable monthly salary, fight sponsorships, and other privileges. That's why this division is known as the waiting room of sumo and likened to being between heaven and hell. So although every wrestler ridden in this banzuke is considered to be in professional sumo wrestling, you can say that a wrestler's professional career only truly starts when they enter the Juryo and Makuuchi division. 
but spaces in these divisions are very limited. Juryo, the second highest division, only has 28 sumo wrestlers, while Makuuchi, or the top division of sumo, is limited to 42. Top division wrestlers are the real celebrities of sumo, getting network coverage of their bouts for the whole 15-day tournament as well as bilingual broadcasts. That's why some wrestlers remain unknown until they reach this division. Wrestlers here also have fan clubs, get advertisement deals, and all the major commercial successes most athletes get. But entering this prestigious division and staying there is a pretty big challenge. The ranking system inside this division is a whole other monster. The top division has its own subdivisions, the Sanyaku ranks and the Maegashira ranks. Starting from the top is the rank of Yokozuna, then the Ozeki, Sekiwake, and Komusubi. These four ranks are actually titles, hence wrestlers in these ranks are called Sanyaku or title holders, while the rest are called Maegashira wrestlers, who are numbered according to the remainder of the Sanyaku ranks to make a total of 42. And as you can see, the name of the title holders are the biggest and boldest in the Banzuke, but these titles aren't just handed to everyone. There are stringent criteria for promotion and some harsh demotions once a wrestler receives these titles. For example, the lowest of the title holders, the rank of Kumusubi, is widely regarded as a difficult rank to maintain. Wrestlers at this rank are likely to face all the Ozeki and Yokozuna in the first week of a tournament, with a Yokozuna normally scheduled for the opening day. Newly promoted wrestlers to the rank of Kumusubi often get demoralized with loss after loss from facing the highest ranked sumo wrestlers in the first week of the tournament. That's why it's really rare to see a newly promoted Kumusubi get a majority win during his debut at the rank. But on the other hand, Sekiwake face an instant demotion if a wrestler at this rank gets a majority loss record in a grand tournament. And like Komusubi wrestlers, they are scheduled to face the top title holders during tournaments. And yet, promotions to Ozeki and Yokozuna are even much harder to achieve. A wrestler in the Sekiwake rank must be able to achieve at least 33 wins in three consecutive tournaments, including having at least 10 or more wins in the last tournament, for a promotion to Ozeki. This feat isn't at all easy to achieve. As said earlier, once a wrestler gets a majority loss as a Sekiwake, he almost always loses the rank, and getting 33 wins over three consecutive tournaments is pretty exemplary. This wrestler Goido holds the record of getting stuck in this rank. He was Sekiwake for 14 consecutive tournaments, that's a little over two years before he could get the promotion to Ozeki. And then, Yokozuna is basically the final boss level, and this is the only permanent ranking a sumo wrestler can achieve in sumo's ranking system. A Yokozuna is able to keep his title regardless of how well or poorly he does in the grand tournaments, although Yokozuna are consistently under intense scrutiny for everything they do in and out of the ring, so they can't really keep losing as they hold the grandest title in sumo. Technically, there are no absolute criteria to be promoted to Yokozuna, although apparently the standard is at least two consecutive grand tournament championships at the rank of Ozeki. But this isn't absolute, as an equivalent performance can still earn an Ozeki the promotion to Yokozuna. The only qualifications we're certain of is that the wrestler must have the power, skill, dignity, and grace to become Yokozuna. But whatever that really means has made this rank more controversial than it should be. So as a sumo wrestler climbs up the divisions and within it the ranks, the level of difficulty for their bouts increases with tougher opponents, like advancing through the levels in the game. This also means some wrestlers have rank comfort zones or rank ceilings, where they do well at a certain rank and anything higher could well mean a losing record in that tournament. Some wrestlers spend their whole professional career not even making it to the salaried divisions. 
Sumo's ranking system is one of the key features of Japan's national sport, and you can expect the Japanese to put these insanely hard barriers to make sure only the best of the best make it. The ranking system alone makes you appreciate more the dedication these athletes have, not even counting the lifestyle and the social expectations a sumo wrestler takes up when they enter the sport. They truly are more than just athletes. Thank you for watching. I'm Ter, who writes, narrates, and edits these videos on this channel. And this year, I've made the decision, the big decision, to follow my creative passion of producing videos like this. And although it's scary to put YouTube as my main focus this year, the pandemic has made me realize that I need to live my life where I am most happy. And that's when I am expressing myself creatively rather than doing administrative work for my company. This 2022, I wanted to go through this journey of developing myself creatively by exploring filmmaking, creative writing, or even graphic design to be able to produce better videos for the sumo community and even to those outside of it. Because I want my videos to be able to reflect the beauty of sumo and tell the stories of its dedicated athletes in the way their stories deserve to be told. So I also hope that as you follow this channel, it also inspires you to invest in yourself and make the decision to explore your own creativity and get back to the things you've always been passionate about. But if you're having trouble where to start, Skillshare, who are the sponsors of this video, is genuinely a great community to take those steps. I have taken classes like Finding Fulfillment Using Pivots to Power Your Creative Career by Emma Gannon, which is what inspired me to take that leap into putting serious time in making content for this channel. It made me realize that there's so much more than just a career or whatever. I can do much more than this, you know? So there's a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can discover for yourself thousands of classes they have on there. And I think the next class I'm going to take is indoor gardening, grow houseplants, veggies, and herbs. And I know that it's not really related at all to video production, but hey, I'm a complex person and I have many interests. <laughs> but that's what's cool about Skillshare. You can discover classes for so many topics. And I personally found them easy to follow because they're designed to encourage learning. So again, there is a link on the description description of this video for a month free trial of Skillshare to the first 1000 people. I really do hope you get to take a chance in exploring your creativity and I'm glad I can be here with you.